kia ora e hoa, haere mai. Come and join me for a very special story in Susie's Book Corner. Christmas Eve, a very special time of year. Although some people celebrate Christmas in different ways, and some people don't celebrate Christmas at all. Have you got a Christmas tree up this year? We've got a funny Christmas tree. Look at this one here. It's very special to us though, or my family. Do you know why? Well, some of these blocks are blocks that my children had, and some are blocks that their father had. So they're very old blocks, and I don't know if a dog or a child nibbled this one. But they bring very happy memories to us all. And it does still look a bit like a Christmas tree, doesn't it? Well, the story I've got today, The Christmas Caravan by Jennifer Beck and Robin Belton, is about a very special Christmas too. Are you nice and comfy? Ready for a Christmas story? Let's begin. Simon and his mother lived in a caravan park on the outskirts of town. Some of the townspeople said the park was untidy and should be closed down. But for Simon and his mother, it was better than the big block of flats they'd lived in before. We are so lucky to have this place, his mother would say. The caravan may be small, but it's great to have our own home. I think that's their caravan way down there. Let's see. One hot December afternoon, Simon happened to see a competition entry form in the local newspaper. Look, Mum, he said, we could enter this Christmas competition for the best decorated house. The prize is a holiday at the beach, staying at a motel. You always say you wish we could have a holiday by the sea. His mother hesitated. Well, that's true, she said, and I think it's a great idea. The problem is I can't afford to buy fancy Christmas ornaments or strings of coloured lights. Simon thought for a while. Then his face brightened. We'll make our own decorations, he said. Can you see what Mum's doing? Mmm, Christmas baking. Yum! With a bag in each hand, Simon hunted around the caravan park collecting junk. He brought several loads back to the caravan, hosed them clean in the yard, and sorted the different items into piles. Now, he said, we need a can opener and scissors. Together they threaded cans of many colours onto lengths of string. Look, have you ever tried doing anything like this? Mum looks like she's cutting up a big plastic bottle. And Simon's busy painting them. They turned the plastic bottles into bells and used them to decorate the outside of the caravan. Then they stood back to admire their work. Simon looked thoughtful. It's beautiful, he said, but it doesn't look Christmassy enough. I think we need one more thing. Well, let's have a look. What do you think it might need? It has strings of cans, like strings of lights. Hmm. A row of plastic bells going right around it. It looks really good. What could it need? He straightened out some crumpled sheets of tin foil and made a big silver star. His mother hung it from the aerial on the caravan roof. That's just what was missing, she said. Look. A map in the local newspaper showed the addresses of all the entries in the competition. As Christmas drew near, crowds of people came out at night to marvel at the many houses festooned with twinkling coloured lights. There were scenes of Santa Claus with his sleigh and reindeer prancing high across the rooftops. Richly decorated Christmas trees stood in front windows, surrounded by piles of presents. They look beautiful, don't they? 
Although their address was listed with the others in the newspaper, no one from the town came to look at the decorated caravan. Some of their neighbours in the park just stared and whispered to one another. But others told Simon the caravan looked as colourful as a Christmas card. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? However, everyone agreed that the park looked a lot tidier now that the rubbish had been picked up. They said they'd try to keep it that way. Cool. The mayor and two of his councillors were judging the competition. On the night they were going to choose the winner, Simon waited all evening for the judges to arrive. They did not come. Perhaps they got lost, his mother said, as she comforted him and tucked him into his bed. Next morning she telephoned the mayor. Our caravan was on the address list, she told him. Couldn't you find it? Well, uh, um, that wasn't exactly the problem, replied the mayor. There were so many magnificently decorated houses to choose from, it was getting late and, and after all, a caravan isn't really a house. This caravan is our home, Simon's mother replied, and it was my son's idea to decorate it. He's very disappointed that you and the other judges didn't come to see it. Mm. That evening, a shiny black car drove slowly into the caravan park. Simon jumped up and down with excitement as the mayor and the councillors stared at the decorated caravan. The councillors mumbled words like, Very different. Mm, most unusual. The mayor asked Simon about the decorations and listened carefully as he explained about making them. Then the mayor talked with the councillors, and they looked for a long time at the silver star that hung above the caravan. See the star shining? Finally, the mayor cleared his throat and said, <clears throat> We have already chosen the best decorated house. That was decided last night. But... We think your caravan deserves a special award. I have a friend who runs a camping ground by the beach. How would you like to stay there for a week at my expense in your caravan? Wow! Simon was so excited when the time came to go on holiday that he didn't even mind taking down the decorations. He put them in the new recycling bins that have been placed in each corner of the caravan park. The neighbours in the park had a collection and bought Simon a boggy board. The councillors gave gifts of beach towels and sunscreen. Everyone cheered and waved as Simon and his mother set off on their journey to the beach with the caravan towed behind the mayoral car. Look, the car that the mayor drives. <laughs> it's towing the caravan. How cool is that? They had a wonderful holiday, surfing and swimming and enjoying the sunshine. Simon's mother said it really was a dream come true. That looks like fun, doesn't it? Maybe you've had beach holidays like this. What's that? A donkey on the beach? <laughs> I wish we didn't have to leave, Simon said when the week was nearly over. He loved the beach and had made some new friends who went to the local school. His mother smiled. Well, I've been offered a job at the beach store. If we want to, we can stay here for as long as we like. They sent a letter to the mayor to thank him and tell them their good news. In time, the caravan became too small for Simon and his mother, and they moved into a cottage beside the store. They kept the caravan on the front lawn for when friends from town came to stay. Every Christmas, Simon decorated it with seashells, adding more and more each year. And the funny thing was, people came to look at it.
all year long. And that's the end of the story. Hey, but before we close the book, how about we have a look at this caravan? Hasn't Simon done an amazing job decorating it? He added a little bit more each year. Hmm, <laughs> He's made it very special, hasn't he? And it shows you that there are lots of different ways to celebrate Christmas. It doesn't have to be with lots of Christmas lights and fancy trees. It could be with a tree like this. Did you enjoy that story? It was lovely, wasn't it? The Christmas Caravan by Jennifer Beck and Robin Belton. If you want to find out more about this story, head to scholastic.co.nz. Merry Christmas, my friend. Have a wonderful time with you and your whanau. I'll see you in the new year. Kakite. Ka